welcome back for another mock test and we are joined by Zayal, sorry, Carmen. So we're joined by Carmen Hello. today. Carmen has done a test at Mill Hill before. We are at Mill Hill. Um, what was it that came up last time on your previous exam? Um, it's a rule that I, I'm, I'm familiar with. And uh, it's a left, turn left and turn immediately right. Okay. I result in left lane, but I should directly go to the right lane and turn right. Okay, so a little bit of lane inaccuracy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so we've got a route set for Carmen to try and test these skills. Was there any other areas that terrified you on your driving test? Uh, the apex roundabout. The apex roundabout. Yeah. Okay, so we'll make sure we get some practice on that as well. Okay? okay. Right, just before we get started, Carmen, do you have any questions for me? Not for now. Not for now. <laughs> All right. Maybe save that till the end. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is just going to give you the brief speech. So for everybody that's watching, your examiner would most likely tell you this at the beginning of your exam. You'll be driving for roughly 45 minutes, give or take. We will do a reverse exercise at some point, possibly a controlled stop and 20 minutes of independent driving. However, we're going to do a little bit longer than the 20 minutes independent driving because we've custom you a route. So we're going to follow that sat now for quite a long time, okay? Mm -hmm. If there's any questions about directions or you're not sure, ask me, ask your examiner, and if it is safe, we will do our best to try and assist you with directions, okay? okay. If that's clear, Carmen, what I'd like you to do is drive on. Uh, just before that, any good marks will be up here in green. Any amber or advisory driver faults will be up here in yellow. And any serious or dangerous driver faults will be up here in red. When you're ready, drive on and follow the sat nav, please, okay. Carmen. Thanks. This is my previous exam uh, driving instructor. Oh, right, okay. Two day crew, time to get started. Now as you exit the car park, it's quite narrow. However, there are mirrors to help you see round the corners. I highly recommend that you use these mirrors to plan for any traffic before going round the bend and exiting or entering this car park. Turn left, Bunce Lane, then turn right. Why that's ever so kind of you Gloria and thank you for the directions to turn left onto Bums Lane and immediately after we'll be turning right. Now on your driving test if you forget the directions and it's safe to do so you may ask your examiner and they might repeat the directions for you. Come on, just before you go double, yeah, turn left. double check the sat nav okay. yeah. New camera angles have been amended to fix the blind spots so that you guys can see approaching traffic at junctions and also I've added the speedo so stay tuned for future videos. Okay, come on, we were supposed to turn, turn on the right. right. That's okay. What I'd like to do is turn right on the roundabout instead, please. This next junction is a roundabout and it has two lanes of traffic on the right. We need to stop and allow this car to turn yet there is a big gap behind it and no more vehicles were turning immediately after. This created an opportunity for Carmen to go and she receives her first driver fault for progress, undue hesitation. The best way to look at this is to know that there's two lanes and that one of the lanes will go towards you and the other lane, like the red car, will go away from you. This is an important information to read and act on as it will help you to make a more informative decision when reaching a roundabout to an opportunity for you to make progress. Oh, this, I should turn left and turn right immediately. Yeah, oh. just following the sat nav. Oh, okay. So it's all right, we've gone off course. So just don't follow the sat nav for the time being. Just continue to follow the road ahead. Carmen, Carmen, Carmen. Come come what are we going to do, really? Now, seriously guys, it's okay to go a different direction on your driving test. Remember, safety is more important than direction. So keep calm, carry on, and maintain your focus. Okay, come on, what I'd like you to do a little bit further down, we'll have a road on the right. Okay, so just keep going. 
when you see the next road on the right, I'd like you to turn into it, please. So please take the next road coming up on the right. Is it just me, or does that driving instructor sound really grumpy? Maybe Carmen's pissed him off. Well, if this is the thought that's running through your head on your driving test, block it out. Stay focused, as this will give you a higher chance of passing. Thank you. At the end of this road, turn right again. Sounds like somebody didn't have their coffee this morning. Anyways, as we're coming towards the end of a junction, remember your mirrors, signal, position, speed, look routine. Now that sounds like a lot to take in, but on your driving lessons, it's something you want to practice again and again perfectly, as perfect practice makes perfect. And at the end of the road, turn right, please. Continue to look for traffic signs when using SatNav, as this will give you more reliable information. Mm. Hang on a second, Carmen, there's a sign there. All right, what I need you to do is turn, yeah. turn right, we'll reverse back and go back out, okay? To turn around, we're just looking for a quick fix. And I asked Carmen to turn right here and then reverse straight back. However, she decides to drive very far down the road, which will only make it longer for her to reverse. Okay, so it was just mentioning, so we would turn here, then reverse and go back out. So you've got a long way to reverse now, Carmen. So here Carmen again makes effective observations, looking over both shoulders, out the back windows, into the blind spots where pedestrians or any other hazard may be hiding. So that's an excellent use of observations. Now, we've reversed back roughly 10 meters so far, possibly up to the point of 20 meters, and we've been relying on the camera. As you can see, Carmen's really using that and using her mirrors, yet we haven't done any shoulder checks into the blind spots until we reach this point. Well, not even yet, hang on a second. Until, there we go, until we reach this point. This is important as there is one driving maneuver that you may be asked to do on your driving test, which involves pulling over, stopping on the right hand side of the road, and then reversing back in a straight line, roughly two car lengths. It's very important that you must check all around the vehicle, make effective observations before beginning your reverse, and then throughout the maneuver, checking again over the blind spots, making sure it's safe to continue your reverse exercise. Now, as we leave the car park, oh, sorry, the, no, sorry, the, God damn it, the residential area. <laughs> Oh, I've got another coffee, don't worry, I'll be alright for the rest of the video. Carmen does go over the speed limit, which is 10 miles an hour here, and because it's such a built up area where I have had small children walk out in between vehicles, I suggest not exceeding the 10 mile an hour limit, and this has been recorded as a serious driver fault for use of speed. And then if you follow the sat-nav again now, so it would be turning left here, and then just follow the sat-nav again for me please. Remember it's competition time all the time here at Two Day Pass and we're giving away free driving test bookings. For your chance to enter, just subscribe and write down in the comments below free driving test. Every time the channel reaches another benchmark of a thousand subscribers, a lucky winner will be chosen at random to have a driving test booked in for whichever part of the UK you live in. So if you'd like to enter the competition, remember, subscribe, write down in the comments below free driving test and we will announce a winner soon as we just reach 4,000 subscribers. Thank you and good luck. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the first exit, Bums Lane. Then turn left. We're coming round the corner onto Bums Lane. And if you're not sure of directions, you may ask or look to the screen. Is it first exit? So second. have a look at the blue line. And there's some arrows as well pointing, showing you where to go. It's the roundabout and take the first exit, then turn left. With traffic following, making the decision to stop at this roundabout has been recorded as undue hesitation. The next vehicle on the right was roughly 50 meters or more further into the road, giving ample time for Carmen to make progress. On this occasion, it has been recorded as an advisory driver fault for undue hesitation. However, this can be a serious driver fault 
as we have affected the traffic behind. Sometimes on your driving test, you may be given discretion and this has been recorded as an advisory driver fault on this occasion. Like to find a safe place to pull up on the left. After 300 yards, turn right, go Beaters Grove, then turn left. Using reference points on your front windscreen will be more reliable for judging your distance from the pavement. Carmen relies on her blind spot mirrors which are misleading her and this is the reason why she almost hit the pavement. Okay, drive on when you're ready and follow the sat nav please. When I was trained to become a driving instructor, I was taught reference points to judge the distance between the left hand side of the car and the pavement when we pull over and stop on the left. I've therefore passed this knowledge on to my students and come to the conclusion that nobody cares. <laughs> so what I've done is taken it away and you'll be surprised as soon as I reach to take the reference point away, people are almost biting my hand off to get it back. So I highly recommend using reference points to judge your distance from the curb. After 100 yards, turn right, go meters Grove, then turn left. Come on, when I play my maracas, I go jig jiggy boom, jig jiggy boom. They say he's the maddest guy, although he's the hottest guy in Havana, in Havana. Oh, sorry, um, yeah. Uh, Carmen receives two driver faults here for the same reason, back to back. So, sorry, I was just busy singing there, the Carmen Miranda song, although it's probably not. Rewind the clip and you'll see that Carmen does not make effective use of her mirrors before signaling right to do the last right turn. And this turn here, our left turn, again, we do not have effective use of mirrors before signaling to turn left. And Carmen receives two driver faults for the same category back to back. Now it's important to know that if you do receive the same driver fault in the same category consistently throughout your driving test, there is a high chance that this driver fault may be developing into a more serious or dangerous driver fault. And you may receive a serious or dangerous driver fault for consecutive driver faults in the same category. So make sure when you're doing your driving lessons with your driving examiner, sorry, driving instructor, that you follow up on your driver faults and understand where you need to make progress. And important, if the same fault consists and carries on coming up, that you rectify this using reference points or any new teaching methods that your instructor may use or help you with on your driving lessons. Alternatively, subscribe to my channel and just go through the playlist and you'll find everything that you need to know. And then you can tell your driving instructor what you think is correct, and then he'll probably look at you like, what are you talking about? This is how I'm supposed to, or you're supposed to do it, so listen to me, sunshine, because you don't know diddly squat, but in your mind, you can kind of go, actually, I kind of do, and just bite your tongue, listen to what they've got to say, and if you don't like it, there's plenty more driving instructors out there, so find the right driving instructor for you. God, I don't know how many driving instructors I went through, but there were so many of them that were rubbish. Guys that were telling me, oh yeah, you're fine, go for your test. No, I wasn't. I'd fail my test immediately. And other people that were just on their phone constantly, texting, calling, and telling me about the divorces, etc. And then I had other instructors, which were a little bit younger, telling me about their nightclubbing and all of their romance in their life. And you know what? I'm paying you for a driving lesson. I'm not paying you to sit here and listen to you talk about your life. So it's very important that you find the correct driving instructor for you and you feel comfortable when you're driving with them and you gain knowledge that you remember and use to pass your driving test first time. At the end of the road, turn right, then cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Turn right, Orange Hill Road, then cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A5109, Dean's Lane.
cross the roundabout and take the second exit. We are now at the middle of the mock driving test and this section will involve plenty of roundabouts. Now this is the part that everybody dreads on their driving test, yet it cannot be avoided. Now Carmen has an appropriate approaching speed to this junction, which allows her the early vision, early decision, and she now sees the gap to flow in behind the silver van and make her silky smooth progress. This is what is expected of you on your driving test. The next section of this driving test will involve a double roundabout system. That will be one sign that shows you two separate directions. And it's important that we understand the sign as there'll be more information, as in two separate roundabouts, two separate directions, giving us more chance of confusion. Now the highway code tells us, unless there's road markings stating otherwise or signs, to use the left lane when going left and the right lane when going right at a roundabout. Now there are two lanes as we approach the roundabout, yet Carmen seems to be in the middle of both. We don't affect the traffic and Carmen makes progress as she moves through the first roundabout to turn right. It's at the point where Carmen moves back over to the left and changes her direction to move towards the left lane to turn left at the second roundabout. This is where Carmen receives a driver fault for her use of mirrors for change of direction. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A5109, Dean's Lane. Listening to Gloria more closely, I've heard that she's only mentioned to take the second exit. What that means is she hasn't said turning right. Unless our examiners told us to turn right or the sign, which doesn't suggest that's a right turn, as the two circles are conjoined, we may be able to use the left lane. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. As we approach the first roundabout, can we agree Carmen's more into the left lane? Yet as we emerge into the roundabout, we're moving over to the right, close to the circle. Now back over, of course, to the left lane to be in the correct lane for exiting at the second roundabout. Now it's these changes of direction which could be recorded as driver faults for lane discipline or control steering where I've marked Carmen down for making effective use of her mirrors for change of direction. Okay, so we're coming to your favourite part of the route now, Carmen. We are now about to approach Apex Corner Roundabout. After 300 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, A1, Watford Way. This next part of the driving test is without a question of a doubt, the most difficult part of this driving test route. In fact, of any driving test route at Mill Hill. But no matter where you're taking your driving test throughout the UK, you're more than likely going to have a roundabout like this. What I mean is that the traffic on the right is relentless and there's very far and few gaps in between. And it's only a matter of time between where you see a gap and another vehicle to come speeding around the roundabout. Here Carmen sees a gap and starts to make progress but the van coming from the right is gaining on her and has to slow. This is enough for Carmen to receive a serious driver fault. As the van leaves the roundabout, he gives us a toot to warn us of his presence. Rewinding this clip by 10 seconds by double tapping the left side of the screen can be a useful tool for revision. And if we go back to the point where Carmen decided to enter the roundabout, we can revise and see if she chose the appropriate time. The best way to make this decision is the walkout rule. For some people, they do say that they would walk out regardless of there being traffic. So for those people, I like to say, imagine you're holding a young, maybe an imaginary relative's hand, say around the age of 10. So if you would walk out holding this young, imaginary relative's hand, would it be an appropriate time? 
Most people make a very realistic and safe decision when imagining holding a young relative's hand. So for this reason, this is why I mention this. For those people out there that they say they would walk out at any time, Stephanie, if you're still watching, you know who you are. Now here Carmen moves back into the left lane and shortly after she's been given directions to take another roundabout third exit turning right. Now as Carmen decides to change back to the right lane, which is correct, she's starting to look a little bit longer into her right mirror. Now notice now as she checks her mirror, she starts to swerve to the left. And this is enough for Carmen to receive a driver fault advisory for control steering. Avoid prolonged looks unless necessary and use glances in your mirrors to avoid losing focus of the road ahead and gain better control. Okay, Carmen, while we're in the traffic, I'll ask you your tell me question. Would you be able to tell me about the power steering, please? How would you check to see if it's working before you start a journey? Uh, when I start the engine, the wheel, uh, the, how can I say? After it feels uh, a noticeable the movement. Right the and uh, when and I the third exit, start... A5100, the Broadway, then turn left. Sorry, I missed that. So we're turning right on the roundabout third okay. exit. Yeah, and, uh, um, but why why start uh, if I move it? I can immediately tell is it work or not. Okay, how does it want to feel if it's working properly? The feel. Mm, if it's it, working it sh properly. It should be very light and you Lovely. Should, Thank shouldn't you. be heavy. So you just have to excuse my hearing. I'm getting old. I couldn't <laughs> hear you properly because of the sat nav. All right, so just to confirm, you'll be taking the third exit at the next roundabout, Mill Hill roundabout, turning right. After 150 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, A5100, the Broadway, then turn left. Okay guys, I'm going to sign off until the last driver fault. Enjoy the rest of this video as if it was an ASMR. Hopefully this is a nice quiet section for you to really watch the road ahead like a real driving test. If you'd be more interested in me doing commentary throughout regardless of any driver faults and just giving tips and suggestions, then please write that down in the comments below. I will join you at the end for the maneuver for our last driver fault on the forwards bay parking exercise. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, A5100, the Broadway, then Turn left. So if you weren't normally doing a mock test for YouTube, Carmen, what would you be doing today? So, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, it's just me being silly. The examiners usually ask this kind of a question. Okay. So if you weren't if you weren't doing a test today, what would you normally be doing? Work. Okay. Nice and sweet. <laughs> Turn left, flower lane, then take the second right.
After 200 yards, turn right, Sylvan Avenue. Turn right. Okay, come on, I'm going to end your independent driving there. Okay. I would like you to take the next road coming up on the left, please. It's the next road coming up on the left. There's no markings, but it's, well, there are, but they're very faint. It's this one here. Be nice if the council puts some new paint on the road to increase road safety. How much does that cost? Okay, I'd like to find a convenient place to pull up on the left, please. Carmen, hmm? I didn't ask you to reverse, just to pull over okay. and stop on the left. So okay. it's a little bit far away from the curb. Yes, it is. So. All right, put it in park for me, please. Okay. We're going to put a timeout on the mock test. Okay. So what would help you to have better accuracy and be a good distance from the pavement? What are you doing? What would you use? What tips or tricks have you been taught? Uh, two reference points. The first one is the front or the middle line, close to the curb. I know the front view is very close. And the other one is from the side mirror. I can see the back. But I feel now the front is very close. I'm afraid if I go further it will hit. But uh, by the back, I feel it's still quite far away from the curb. So which one is more important, the front or the back? The front one. Good. Yeah. So which one which one of the two reference points are you using more when you're pulling over to park? The one at the front that will help you with the front or this reverse mirror if yeah. you like? Both <laughs> important. Why are you laughing? No, both important. Okay. Have I missed a joke here or something? No, no. I don't get it. What no. was so funny then? Be because I, I feel like that they're both important, but I refer to that mirror more than this. Okay, one. that's yeah. good. All right, you're analyzing <laughs> it, yeah? Yeah. Because the car beeped a lot earlier. I think it terrified you so much, you steered away from the pavement and you were like, whew, yeah. you know, a meter away from the curb. So use your reference points. They're actually even more reliable than technology. Okay, because the cameras get dirty, that technology, the sensors on the car might be oversensitive or not even work altogether. So having the reference point, like you told me, is really the best way. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you directions from now on. That's the end of your independent drive. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you're ready, I'd like you to drive on for me, please. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the road, turn right, please. I'd like you to turn right again, please.
the roundabout turn right. At the next roundabout ahead, you might be able to see the sign. I'd like you to turn left, first exit. Next road on the left, please. And I'd like you to take the next road on the left, please. Turning left again. And what I'd like you to do is pull up behind the next grey car on the left. Do you see the parked car on the left? Pull up in the space behind it, please. Thank you. Okay, what I'm going to ask you to do now is actually just edge up until there's about a car length between you and that grey car. Okay, so I want you to go, now I want you to go on the driveway, or not on the driveway, but in front of the driveway on the yellow line. But leave a car length between you and that vehicle, okay? okay. So when it's safe, edge up until your car length on that vehicle. They just go straight? Right? Yeah, just stay sh on this side and just go straight. And that would be fine. Yes. You can just stop here. Yeah. Okay, so this is just part of the test, all right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to drive on. We're going to go back into the test centre now, okay? And then we'll do your forwards bay park when we get in there. I'll ask you to drive forwards into a bay, okay? okay. So what we're going to do is drive on. At the end of the road, turn left, and then immediately turn right into the test centre mm. when you're ready. And then we just go around to the left here for me, please. <coughs> It's a little bit busier. I'd like you to drive forwards into one of the bays you choose. 
and I join you back as we come back to Mill Hill Driving Test Centre. Here we are doing our Forwards Bay Park and Carmen is lining up her reference point. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't and as Carmen makes her effective observations before entering into the bay she realises that she's actually over the line on the right hand side. This is absolutely fine and Carmen does what she's been trained to do and makes effective observations before correcting her position by reversing out of the bay and then makes effective observations again before moving forwards back to complete the exercise and finishing between the lines, which is the requirements for your driving test. So if you've gained value from this video, please like, and let's get this video up to 100,000 likes, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I wish. Anyways, your support is amazing. And guys, for me to make better content for you, which I enjoy doing, and I hope it helps you to learn to drive, then I need those suggestions suggestions down below. So I'm relying on you guys to tell me what works for you, what you like, what you don't like, so I can make the best content to help you guys learn to drive for free. I have been here um, enjoying myself, drinking coffee for the past six hours. So if you would, please show me some love and subscribe and comment and like. That would be amazing. And an extra special thank you to Carmen. Now we're about to do the debrief and I'll see you on the next video, guys. Peace out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, do me a favor. We'll just for added security, switch the engine off. And that also means that's the end of the test. Yeah? <gasps> How are you feeling? Um, I can't focus at the beginning journey. Okay. But later, after the independent driving, I feel more focused. Okay, yeah. Mm. So the sat-nav was distracting, maybe? or uh, At the beginning, I think I'm too nervous. Oh, okay. I, so just like, uh, brain doesn't work. <laughs> brain freeze. <laughs> um, okay, so... Is there any points that stayed in your memory or anything you're unsure of? Any questions you have for me? Mm. I forgot on the big round bot why I changed lane, changed to the left. Did I signal? Or oh, I glanced to the mirror. I forgot. Did I do that? Which one? Because you had two big roundabouts. You had uh, the, the first one, the apex one. The I, apex. I, I remember I did on uh, the second one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they were both decent with your mirror checks and your lane discipline that okay. was that was good okay mm -hmm. um anything else on your mind uh, one pull to uh park on the left i think i have two to big gap good yeah another well yeah. identified yeah, yeah that's that's fair to say that yeah <laughs> at the beginning i lost the, the navigation <laughs> Yeah, we did have a little bit of lapse there, yeah. but that's normal usually on the test, you know, especially if someone's nervous. Mm. I've said this a few times before, you know, I've missed directions, you know, we all are human. It's very easy to miss a direction, especially if we're nervous. That's okay, you know that's okay, yeah? Mm. So I'll just get you new directions, yeah? And um, because I'm kind of not too familiar with this area, I went into the estate and got us a turnaround. I was using the maps and it showed us we could come out, but then when we went in, we saw a sign that said it was a dead end. So we had to reverse out and we got back out on course. But it's fine, yeah, if you go the wrong way, just as long as you do it safely. Any other hot spots or questions? Mm, don't remember. All right, yeah. so that's the end of the test. Would you like me to go over the results for you? Yeah. Okay, so on this occasion, yeah. do you feel you passed? I feel. You failed? Yeah. Okay. Why? I feel I passed. Oh, you feel you passed? Yeah. Okay. All right. This bit's really bad then. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. You haven't. Um, do you want to hear why? Oh, why? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I'll do my best to do these in order as I do my best to try and write them down in order. Okay? Okay. So the first roundabout, this is a driver fault. Actually, let me just do what a lot of people tune into the videos for. So a serious or a danger fault is unofficially, people call them major faults, okay? But serious or danger is one of those we fail our driving test. We got two, okay? So there's two here. One was the apex roundabout. We'll come back to that. And then the other one was in the estate. 
State, state. Yeah, you know that estate where I just mentioned, I, I'm not too familiar with the area, so I drove you in and got uh, you to yeah. come back out. Uh, it, it looked like we could just get out again. Yeah, speed. Yeah. Uh, is it too, too fast? I noticed it's 10. You saw it, yeah. 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 At that point where you saw it, you were doing, I think, 14. Mm. Hopefully this camera might, sometimes the steering wheel blocks the speedo a little bit, but... um. Yeah, we were above the speed limit. We did go up to 14 there, and it's a 10 mile an hour road. So it's enough to give us a serious fault. Mm. One or two miles an hour over the speed limit. Mm. Unofficially, you might give, it might be given some kind of discretion or leeway, yeah, mm. from your examiner. Might, okay. But literally one mile and over is still one mile an hour over. So anyways, okay. So there's two for that, so we haven't failed so for those for reasons. This is Apex Emma too slow? Mm, yeah. Uh, so what happened is you there's an opportunity for you to go, and there was a white van coming. This would be very difficult for you to see, because the white van came in quite fast into the rear of your vehicle. It will be a lot easier when you see this video. So this is mm -hmm. the best bit about these videos for you and for a lot of other people that are learning right. to drive. I did understand this. I purposely put okay. cameras to try and aid this process for yourself and okay. for people watching so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So this is the only channel on YouTube that does this, <laughs> all right? Shameless plug, okay? <laughs> right, so yes, that white van actually, he was... You know, I, I think this is fair to say he was quite aggressive. He was accelerating into you like he he added accelerator. He was making a point, I think. OK, it's a bit dangerous, but still he has priority where we've moved out and he's accelerating. We've slowed that vehicle down the white van. You completed the roundabout and just as a sort of rub the salt in the wound, the white van beeped you as he went away to make you aware of his presence. I don't know if you remembered. It doesn't matter anyways, okay? So those are the two majors. Should we go over the driver faults? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, so is that serious, I f the reason I fail for these two reasons? Yeah. Okay. It's not a lot. Yeah. And I mean, if you want to put me into the equation, you could say, why'd you take me into that estate? <laughs> I was just trying to get us back on course, that's all. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't excuse the fact of us going over the speed limit, does it? Yeah. Um, okay. So let's just briefly cover your manoeuvre just now. So we did the forwards bay park. Okay. So I'm mm -hmm. just going to put FRW for forwards. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a correction, didn't we? Mm -hmm. That's a driver fault. One. So I can't do the adjust. So I can't adjust it. You can adjust it. But so yes. why is it driver fault? Uh, it's just what the DVSA do. So okay. if we do it all in one, okay, no driver faults. Okay. If we have to adjust on any maneuver, we get a driver fault. Okay. You can do as many adjustments as you need. Roughly about three to four minutes for the maneuvers uh, allotted to the candidate. So if I have adjust uh, two times, but I get in, I got two driver faults. No, you only get one. Ah, okay. Yeah, even so though I can, you adjust twice. So I can adjust the three times. Yeah. <laughs> as, so. as long as I finally get in. Correct. Okay. If I am on the line, what fault will you get? Uh, if you're on the line, you might get a driver fault. Um, we'd probably still put it down as control, okay, mm. even though it's an accuracy thing, mm -hmm. okay. Um, I would suggest being in between the lines as there are the requirements. Again, there are areas where discretion may be given from the examiner. I can't really talk too much about that because I don't know. Okay. I don't know what goes on with, with the way that some examiners mark, but you may be given some discretion. Mm. But in between the lines, the four wheels in the lines, in the bay, which is what you've done here, mm. that's where you want to be. So okay. that's good. Any other questions about the forward bay park exercise? Forward bay park, no. No, good. All right, okay. So that was just at the end here. So the other driver faults here, um, they're on the video in order. I'll, I'll just go through them on the sheet now, okay, because we've been talking about the other ones. So we've got another driver fault here. This was um, double roundabouts. Mm. So you know we had two roundabouts. Yeah. This is something we wanted to look at, and yeah. we can go practice a little bit more. As you went through these two junctions, they could be traffic lights, crossroads, T-junctions, roundabouts. It doesn't matter. It's a junction. Mm. 
we're doing two different junctions very close to each other. And this is the issue. This is where a lot of people get undone. They, mm. they lose themselves. It's about planning for the first roundabout in order to be in the correct lane for the second roundabout. And in fact, that's what you were doing. So you headed towards the double roundabouts. And as you reached the first roundabout, you noticed there was enough room for two lanes, maybe a very faint road marking. And you've gone, ah, oh, I need to turn left at the second roundabout. Let me use the left lane at the first roundabout. But what lane, unless there's road markings, what lane do we use for turning right at the mm. first roundabout? Really? Okay, so you've kind of gone in the middle now. You're not really in the left or the right. I thought this was one lane. <laughs> okay. We'll look back at the video. Now, okay. that's not the reason really too much for the driver okay, fault, okay. okay? But I could see what you were trying to do there. You've gone through the first roundabout and towards the second roundabout. Now, that's where I really want to see you mm. in that left lane. Mm. And you were over the marking in the right lane. We don't need to be in that right lane. We need to be 100% in the left lane. Mm. So for that, I put it down as steering. So it's the control and steering. Mm. It could be marked down as lane discipline. Okay. But we're just going to put it as a steering fault. Because I've noticed sometimes we're quite like this on the steering. Where maybe just a little bit slower. Oh, okay. And then you can be a little bit like smooth. smooth on the steering. Mm. Gives you more time to see the lane. Yeah. Gives you more time to check mirrors if necessary and then make your way into the lane safely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so over here we have a couple now for signaling. Uh, sorry, mirrors before signaling. Mm. Look in the eyes, look in the eyes, not around the eyes, in the eyes. Mirrors, you're under. Now, before you check your mirrors, oh, sorry, before you signal, check your mirrors. Mm. So there was two turns. They were in quite close uh, proximity and your sat nav was telling you and then we turned, I didn't see any mirror checks. And then we got to the next one where I was really watching you. And there was no mirror checks. Mm. I was watching to see if it was going to keep happening, but it didn't. You started checking your mirrors at the same time as signaling. Mm. Not preferable, but okay. And then you started to do it slightly before. Okay, mm. so it was just a sort of moment uh, lapse in concentration, I think. Okay. Probably because the sat-nav is telling you where to go, isn't it? You know, where do I go? Where do I go? Whoa, yeah. where and then we can forget. That's very common on the independent drive, by the way. Uh, forgetting the mirror checks for signalling. Okay. All right. Moving in. Uh, there's, there was two there. Uh, moving on to we have one here, which is going down as the mirror checks for change of direction. So you pulled into the left hand lane at the roundabout. Um, earlier, we did have a discussion about this off camera where you're coming towards the roundabout and you're going, oh, hang on, do I need to be here on the left? And you're like, yeah, I do need to be here on the left. And then you move the car left, don't you? Mm. But what do we need to check before we move the mirror, car left? Mirror. Yes. So there was one occasion, again, just an advisory driver fault, but we're suddenly doing that again with the steering and we haven't checked the mirror first. So it's really going to be problematic for you in future. So make sure you just keep checking those mirrors religiously, yeah? Every six to ten seconds, mirror, mirror, mirror. Okay, unless there is something that takes your attention. There's a major hazard coming up. Forget the mirrors, focus on the hazard. Make sure you know what's going on and then plan effectively after you see that information. Okay, so we're moving in now to the undue hesitation. Uh, and then we've got a few after that. So another two driver faults here for undue hesitation at the roundabouts so we need to make progress there's a few block of cars coming there's a few cars on your right coming and the cars on your right and the block of cars well the block of cars are blocking the traffic on the right from going giving you an opportunity to look out for block of cars mm -hmm. and the ones on the right sometimes there's two lanes on the right you know as they come into the traffic as the traffic comes into the roundabout Sometimes there's just one lane, isn't there? But sometimes there's multiple lanes. Mm. So we had two lanes coming in at the roundabout. And if someone's in the far lane, and maybe you can see their wheels are turning left, where are they going to go if they're in the far lane? So here's the roundabout. Um, I'll put the four entrances like a normal roundabout. I'll show this to camera afterwards. 
And if we've got two lanes on this side, mm. um, all right, maybe that's not the best, but okay, I'll put this as an example. So there's a car here and there's a car here. Where is this car more likely to go? Or where does it have to go? Oh, uh, this way. Good, so left, yeah? Maybe there's a road marking in there that says left only that you might see. And, and where's this car more likely to go? Uh, yeah, straight Just across, straight. yeah? And it can go anywhere after. So there's a very basic diagram there, okay? Now, when you're looking at the cars on your right, and you can see there's different lanes, maybe there's road markings, maybe there's signaling, maybe the wheels are turned, maybe you can see where the driver's looking, the body language of the car. That could possibly help you to go, because if they're in a left-only lane, or if you can already see they're turning left and going left, and it's free, there's no other traffic behind them, you can make progress. Mm. So there was a couple of roundabouts where we missed blocker cars, we missed opportunities based on the information I've just, you know, said. Okay, uh, we have one more driver fault here, and this was when we exit the estate. So you know that estate that I drove us in to turn us around to get us back out, mm. the bit where we got the 14 miles an hour and the 10. Uh, when we reach the exit of the estate, coming back out onto the main road, it's very wide. There's two lanes. You're right in the middle. Yeah. So you're blocking the right lane. So if anyone comes in, we're there. We need to be in the left. Mm. And then, do, 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 do. Okay, so when we reversed out of that estate, you know when we were reversing? I wanted to see more observations over the shoulders. You were very good at checking the mirrors as you were coming back. You probably did about at least two car lengths, maybe a bit more. Mm. Just on the mirrors. Okay. Every car length or every half a car length, every couple of meters, what works for people works for people. Everybody's different. However you want to remember it, we've got to look again. Mm. Another two meters, half a car length or car length maximum. Look again. Mm. Okay. So you've got to keep those observations going throughout that exercise. I put it down as a driver fault. Because I could see you were making observations. It wasn't like you didn't do any observations. You were, okay? All right, so now moving on to the last driver fault here. And this is to do with looking again and observations again. My writing is really kind of hard. Sometimes even I can't read my own writing. Um, but we're staring. We're calling it a stare. So what happened is we stared into the mirror... As stared into mirror for lane change and swerved. So you exited the roundabout and then you came onto the dual carriageway. We're following the dual carriageway and you changed lanes. Uh, oh, well, we did that, yeah. But then there was one where you changed back to the right yeah. because the next roundabout you were turning yeah. right. Yeah. You're staring in the right mirror. What happens after you stare in the mirror? What normally happens to most drivers when they're staring somewhere and not looking where they're going? L lose uh, the control of wheel. Totally correct. So we lost control and you actually were almost to the point where you were going to get too close to the pavement and possibly damage the car. Okay? So when we're checking mirrors, we w would like to do a glance. Mm. How long is a glance? How long is a glance? 0 0.2 seconds. Okay, there we go. Very precise. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, if we do glances, multiple glances, we can always come back for another second. Mm -hmm. So looking ahead, looking to the right, you know, checking to see if it's safe. And then, okay, and then we make our way across. Yeah. All right. So um, that summarizes the driving test report after your mock test. Uh, Carmen, so any questions, any things you want to add? Tell me I'm an idiot. Tell me um, I don't know what I, I, I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I still don't understand the van you mentioned. Yeah. Okay, so on the video, okay. it will be best for you to see it. Because okay, when you're driving, you're looking where you're going. Mm. And that van is just there. So you Behind me? Yeah, so you wouldn't see him. So why is dangerous if it's behind me? 
A very good question. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so when we reach a roundabout, mm. we've got to give priority to which side? Right. Good. Where was the van? He said you're behind me. On the? On the right. Yeah. Uh, Where's he coming from? The right. There's a common theme here. He's on the right. He's in front of you on the right. He's behind you on the right. He's on the side of you on the right. Everyone is on the right, isn't he? Mm. Who do we give priority to at the roundabout? On the right. So where is my fault? So did we cause the van to slow, stop or swerve? These are the uh, three S's. So where, where, where did I do that? Where did I do that? Uh, you put your bum in his face. <laughs> why, why join the roundabout? Correct. Okay, I will recheck the video. Yeah, okay. and it's there for you, isn't okay. it? Yeah, okay. it's good because there are a lot of times it's very hard to remember. So, like I mentioned earlier, not on camera but off camera, mm. I would never remember. So, when people would say stuff like I am saying to you, we'd have a debrief, a report, my brain would be numb. And mm. I'd just look at the person, shake my head, and just say, Yeah, yeah. And I would have no idea where that happened, even though they're telling me and what happened. So if I had a video after I'd done my lesson mock test or whatever, oh my God, I would have learned so much faster. <laughs> Seriously, because I learn from experience and seeing things. Mm. When people talk about hypothetical things or you've got to read a textbook, it just doesn't work for me. That's just who I am as a person. So hopefully that video, or I'm pretty sure that video will really show you what what went on there okay okay it's been an absolute pleasure <laughs> don't forget to leave a like for carmen and to help this video get out to more people i make a massive effort to try and make this as good as possible for everybody to learn as quickly as possible like i just said All right so we'll see you next time stay safe stay tuned i've been scott this has been carmen no, <laughs> no. damn it i wanted the what? official name Oh, Carmen. <laughs> Carmen. All right. See you next time. Bye.